All right. Um, the very last thing I want to show in this segment is that we can take one step further, okay? Given that S and E are linearly related, it's easy enough here to compute, compute the following object, right? If you try to compute S, partial of S with respect to E, okay? What we arrive at is a fourth order tensor, which is our uh, the first appearance of our elasticity tensor here, okay? So in this case, we would get lambda 1 tensor 1, okay? I'll write it in direct notation and also in coordinate notation, right? Plus 2 mu uh, multiplying another tensor, which I'm going to just write as, as I, okay? And I'll say more about it, okay? So, and this is, uh, okay, so this is what we will denote as big C in that font, okay? This is the uh, material elasticity tensor. Okay? Where this quantity, I, is the fourth order Uh, symmetric identity tensor, okay? I ought to mention that clearly, uh, well, it, it, it may not be completely clear yet, but it will become clear in just a little bit. Uh, the, the, the material elasticity tensor is also a fourth order tensor, okay? and so is uh, I. Let me tell you what I is. So if you look at I and you give it indices um, A, B, C, D, and I'm using A, A, B, C, D in place of I, J, K, L just so that we don't confuse the I's, okay? You will see that it is one half delta A, C, delta A, D, sorry, delta A, C, delta B, D, plus delta AD delta BC, okay? And there you see why it is a fourth order tensor, okay? Because it has four indices, all right? The other way to see it also is that, again, in coordinate notation, our expression for the relation that we wrote at the top of the slide is the following, right? So if we have partial of S A B with respect to E C D, we will get lambda delta A B delta C D plus 2 mu times 1 half delta A C delta BD plus delta A D delta B C. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you a couple of more properties of this uh, fourth order elasticity tensor to end this segment. Okay. So, what we see now is this elasticity tensor C with um, indices A, B, C, D now at the risk of confusing the index and the tensor itself, okay? But note that the tensor is written in a different font, okay? So, uh, this has the property that if we reverse the position of um, the first two indices, the tensor remains the same, okay? So it is symmetric with respect to the first two indices. It also is symmetric with respect to the third and fourth index, okay? These are what we call minor symmetries, 
okay? And why does this happen? Why is this quantity, um, this, this tensor symmetric in those, in, in, in that manner? It is because you recall that this is essentially derivative of S A B with respect to E C D. Well, we know that E is symmetric, right? So if we reverse those two indices as we did here, right, it is symmetric. Likewise, A B, it's symmetric in A and B. S is symmetric in A and B. Right, so when we reverse the order of those two indices, it is symmetric as well, okay? It also has this uh, other type of symmetry, which is that C, A, B, C, D is equal to C, C, D, A, B, okay? This is called major symmetry. Can you think of why this follows? Okay. This follows because if you think about it, we have C, A, B, C, D. It's just a second derivative of our strain energy function, right? Because of the fact that the second pure lucky cough stress is the first derivative of this type. Right? So if we took just one of those derivatives, if we just took that, we would get S. Okay? But when we take a second derivative with respect to E, we get our elasticity tensor. Okay? But those derivative orders can be reversed, okay? provided psi hat is sufficiently smooth. Okay? And this is C, C, D, A, B. Okay? This holds if psi hat of E is smooth enough. Right? And for the way we've constructed it, it indeed is smooth. Okay? This particular tensor... Um, this particular form for C for the Simonon Kirchhoff model also is positive definite. Okay? So the elasticity tensor for Simonon Kirchhoff is uh, positive definite. Okay? And what this implies is, what this implies, what this means is that if we take um, any tensor, right? If we take, if we take any tensor, uh, let me say, I'm trying to think of a symbol we haven't yet used, um, H. Right? If we take H belonging to that, okay? And, okay, if we take H belonging to that, what we have is that H contracted with the contraction of C with H. So if we form the sort of a quadratic product, right? which we would write as H A B C A B C D H C D. This quantity is greater than or equal to zero. Okay? It is equal to zero if and only if H itself is equal to zero. Okay? This is what we mean by positive definiteness. 